I try to walk students through uh, what I see to be critical thinking step by step. I hold their hands. We do this as a class. I'll present case studies uh, they may or may not be familiar with, and I'll um, build up that case study from one particular narrative. Uh, I'll offer you know, the insights maybe from a discipline, and we'll develop those arguments fairly fully from that disciplinary orientation or from that particular framing. And then it might be that same day or it might be on a following day, I'll present them with a different narrative that might come from a, a, a different stakeholder's perspective or a dis different disciplinary orientation. And we'll develop that one fairly fully and uh, create the opportunity for, st for students to, I guess, really find their footing in both explanations of a particular policy situation. So we'll do that as a class several times over. We'll look at different case studies. Um, and then I'll ask them also to do that roughly that, that same task in essays, in uh, the assignments that I give to them. The goal is not necessarily in many of these essays to articulate for one position or the other, but to uh, demonstrate that they fully understand that there are multiple competing narratives that are potentially legitimate. And um, you know, depending on the particular assignment, their task might be to understand how those differences underlie a dispute they're seeing in the news, or um, might explain current events, current political events, etc. I teach only 300 and 400 level courses. In my 300 level course, I do have more content where I really need students to, to be able to articulate facts and, and, you know, an understanding of how political process works, et cetera. And I don't change my assessments and my evaluations much based on how course conversations unfold in that class. Uh, my 400 level courses, though, the focus really is heavily on critical thinking. And so if our discussion on a given day follows a road that I wasn't anticipating, a path that I wasn't anticipating, that doesn't, it might cause me to change the essay prompt that I was planning to give for that term, but it doesn't undermine the, I guess, the spirit of that essay prompt. As in, I'm still gonna test them on the extent to which they're able to apply class concepts and understandings to real world situations. The, the challenge that remains then is just making sure that I'm really diligent of recording after each day what actually happens. So at the end of the term, especially if it's a course that I've taught a bunch of times, I don't conflate uh, term A with term B and misremember uh, the content that you know, a given section was exposed to. What I usually tell students is they can disagree with anything that they read in my classes, and I'm not going to grade them based on their agreement or disagreement with, with the ideas that they're presented with, but rather if they just conveniently ignore a certain subset of readings, that's how they will undermine their own success. You can disagree, but you can't ignore. <laughs>